Hey teens, welcome to Saint of the Week, the show where we choose one saint's feast day from this week and discuss their life and their impact on the church. The saint for this week is Saint Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows, whose feast day is February 27th, this Tuesday. Gabriel was born Francesco Pacinti on March 1st, 1838 in Assisi, Italy. He was the 11th of 13 children born to his parents, Agnes and Sante. His father was an accomplished lawyer who worked for the government, and both of his parents were well respected for both their birth and position, as well as their piety and virtue. Francesco was baptized the day he was born in the very same font where, over 600 years earlier, St. Francis of Assisi had been baptized. Shortly after Francesco was born, his father Sante was moved to a post at Montalsa and then to Spoleto, where he was appointed legal assessor in 1841. Tragedy struck the family as, over the course of just two years, two of Francesco's sisters and his mother had died. After the loss of his wife, Sante entrusted the care of his children to a woman named Pacifica, and between the two of them and a priest named Philip Favi, Francesco received his primary education. Francesco was hardly a model child, prone to fits of anger and stubbornness. Even so, he had a friendly, cheerful, and kind disposition, and he was well liked by everyone. His education was continued by first the Congregation of Christian Brothers and then by the Jesuits at the town college. Francesco had a very active li social life as a teenager and young adult, known for being a dancer, hunter, and ladies' man. A model student, everyone was confident that he had a s successful career and a life of pleasure and comfort ahead of him. This was not the case, however, as suffering continued to plague Francesco's life. From 1848 to 1853, he had lost three more siblings and barely recovered from two severe illnesses. He attended a procession where an ancient icon of the Blessed Mother was on display, and as it passed by him, he felt an interior voice asking why he remained in the world. This event and the death of his family members strengthened what had once been only a slight an only slight attraction to the religious life, and he resolved to enter the Passionist congregation. When Francesco announced his resolution to his father, Sante was grieved by his son's choice. Not just because he would lose him, but also because Francesco had chosen such a rigorous penitential order. He forbade him from entering the order and enlisted the help of several relatives to dissuade him. But to no avail. Francesco loved his family dearly, but he knew God was calling him, and finally his father relented. Accompanied by his brother, Aloysius, who was a Dominican friar, Francesco traveled to the Passionist Novitiate at Moravalle, arriving there on September 19, 1856. Two days later, he received the habit and the name Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows. After a year novitiate, he pronounced his final vows. He remained five more months at Moravalle and then moved, along with the other students studying for the priesthood, to Piet Vetterina in June of 1858. There were several local disturbances here, however, and so just a year later, in July of 1859, the group moved once again to the monastery of Isola del Gran Sasso in the province of Taramo. Gabriel took to the religious life with surprising enthusiasm and vigor for someone who had once been so worldly. He excelled both in, as a student and as a religious, following the passionate role to perfection. When he began to display symptoms of tuberculosis, he was not concerned, but in fact joyful, and he prayed for a slow death so that he would be able to prepare himself spiritually. Throughout his illness, he always remained cheerful, never neglecting his duties, and inspiring the other students with his holiness. Gabriel's sickness grew worse, and he was confined to bed, where he ordered that all of his writings be burned, lest they tempt him to pride. Before he could be ordained a priest, he died of consumption on February 27, 1862, when he was just 24 years old. It was reported by those who were with him that, at the moment of his death, Gabriel sat up in bed, his face radiant, and reached out his arms to an unseen figure in the room. It was the opinion of Father Norbert, the director and overseer of his spiritual life, that he had seen the Virgin Mary in his last moments. He is the patron saint of students, youth, clerics, seminarians, and Abruzzo, Italy. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows experienced a great deal of suffering in his life, whether by the loss of a family member or bodily illness. It, but it was through his sorrows that he grew closer to both Christ and his Holy Mother, and fueled his desire for holiness and perfection. Known for being kind, cheerful, and sympathetic, Gabriel's life may have been short, but it shows that God's love can be demonstrated by anyone, no matter how young they may be. St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows, pray for us. Our honorable mentions for this week are St. Luigi Versiglia, 
St. Isabel of France, St. Romanus of Condot, St. Albanus, St. Angela of the Cross, and St. Camilla. And of course, there are thousands of other saints who undoubtedly have their feast days this week, but there are so many of them that there is no way we could list them all here. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of St. Elite. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Peace, Peace be to you. you.